are here so that the boys can sort of get it off the streets, as it were. But I think it's a good thing. It's nice to be able to go out of the school and go to a pub. But you aren't you know, supposed talk. to drink if you're under 18 at Westminster, are you? You're not supposed to drink if you're under 18 anywhere. Um, <laughs> let's face it. Well, we have to cope with it as best we can. You're not allowed to go to pubs unless you're 18 or a school monitor, and you're not allowed to smoke. And if you're caught, then you're punished. But taking pubs, we don't regard it as, uh, you know, a, a major undermining of society if people go to pubs and drink. In London, uh, you can go far away from the school and find a pub and drink. And if you do that and you're not caught, not for me to say good luck to you, but it is one way of, of as it were, living. If you are caught, then you deserve to be punished because not only are you breaking the law, but you haven't got the energy to walk far enough. I gave them the writing for a double period the other day. And they one of the boys know. went out, appeared back two or three minutes later, and I happened to pass by and heavy smell of nicotine. I said, where have you been? He said, I've been to the loo to smoke. It's <laughs> unbelievable. In the middle of a six-form essay, it was fait accompli. He'd had his drag and felt better. I needed to say they then came back after the lesson with some colossal story that they weren't doing it. They were showing, he was showing him some lots of crosses done by someone else, which I'm afraid I don't know. But anyway, I mean... I have to get in touch with, uh, with the parents at some stage, but I'm not, not moving on it at the moment, so... Perhaps As in any school, the staff can swap grumbles and anecdotes in their own common room. But it's in the more formal atmosphere of the monthly heads of department meeting that details of the curriculum are argued. Underpinning the academic concern is the commercial reality. A public school is a business which must anxiously keep reviewing its product in the face of rising costs and changing demand. So could you have the lower school curriculum paper in front of you? And this is really a matter of just pooling ideas. Would you please let us know what you feel about these proposals. Any comment on the Russian arrangement? Um, I think the reasoning behind my not putting in Russian, where it might seem to be absolutely obvious, is that the able boys would be as likely to be drawn from Greek as from German. I'm not so fast about competition within the modern language department, but I do think they're under an obligation to protect the position of Greek in the lower school. I think that if Latin, let alone Greek, is to survive, it has to be supported and not threatened, actually. And see, I can give you um, the syllabus of other schools to show that these um, options are not presented to Latin in a large number of other schools where classics is held in reverence. And nobody ever believes me. They all think that Westminster is sort of classical paradigm. They won't believe that such things happen. It was every other year that I had to make these sort of speeches. And, um, but I would say, I mean, classics in the world at large has to be supported or got opportunity for a classics department to begin to teach Latin as a beginner subject for people coming in new. There's been not the slightest inclination on the part of the classics department to undertake this potentially well, exciting tour. What do you mean? Every boy who comes into the school who wants to start Latin has been welcomed by us. As you know, we're all working for a very full timetable. But there's nothing I'm absolutely prepared, given the manpower, to start people off on classics, on Latin, of course. Just no, as on Latin. Latinists last term were turned out of the fifth, the transitus Latin sets, because they hadn't ever done any Latin. Well, I don't know. This is absolutely new to me. I'm sorry, you better tell me about it after. Please, 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 please. I think there's something special about Latin. I think it's a totally good subject. I don't think it's special, because I don't think anything's special. And I would just like to put the point that, in my opinion, that the Classics has got nothing to offer that science can't offer as well. I didn't say it's special. I just said if it's not special, then okay. If it's got to be supported to survive. I mean, I, as I'm not going to be here all that much longer, I feel there is, believe me, a touch of something objective in what I'm saying about the school, about what the school will or will not continue to be. And I think that it is possible, if a different policy were accepted, that this school could still be a focal point for a large number of excellent children, more and more, coming to this school because it was, and still I hope perhaps could be, famous for its classics. We draw already a number of excellent people in the sixth form. And I think that this is, it is a possible image, let me just say perhaps once more, perhaps before we sort of make Latin optional with this, that and the other, and finally sort of submerge the whole thing, I give it five, perhaps ten years maximum at this rate that we, and I think, I know I will not mention names, but I have heard that people who know what they're talking about at this very school have 
expressed similar opinions. Now, the fact is, all we could decide, well, let's face it, let's make something of our classical tradition, our Latin play, and all these things which we seem to be still well known for, and which, which doesn't reflect itself in any of these proposals. Let us push that. Let us try and attract to this school those sort of children, too, who will say, yes, our daughter, our son, has a bent for classics, let's send him to Westminster. Let's try and, because there are hardly any schools left, only a few. Westminster, St. Paul's, one or two, three or four other schools like that. Well, maybe that's not the sort of weapons you want to have. I mean, that's all I can say. Even now rating 34. Us looking for a spurt now in the last few meters. The traditional public school obsession with sport isn't much in evidence at Westminster. It's partly been eroded by the presence of the girls, who find boys' sports less appealing. Rowing's the sport the school takes most seriously. A little pitch battle here. Over I have virtually no athletic ability whatsoever. I did rowing for a couple of years, but it takes a lot of time. They're very serious about it, but it's very good as a result. Who are coached by an ex gold medalist at the Olympics in a carbo craft. I myself gave up, firstly because it really encroached upon my time more than I was prepared to accept, and uh, secondly because I got kicked out of the crew. <laughs> Uh, a friend and I, a very good friend, a perfectly ordinary good friend. Uh, we had no, nothing between us apart from just friendship, who I spent a lot of time with. We, we'd just been on expedition. In the school, you, you go on expedition. And uh, we'd come back after sort of four days in Snowdonia or something. Um, and we're pretty knackered. It was about 10.30 at night. And uh, we both went up for a shower. And I, I think I went to have a bath, and he, he had a shower. And, and I went downstairs. And about 10 minutes later, he came down. And at the time, we had a small portable television in our study, uh, which is not, strictly speaking, legal. In fact, it's um, illegal. Yes, absolutely illegal. And uh, he came down, um, and I was just sitting on the bed with a towel on my waist, watching the TV, and he came down with a sort of bathrobe on, and he, and he locked the door because we didn't want anyone coming in with the TV, and we sat down watching sort of This Is Your Life or something. And uh, about an hour later or something, knock, knock, knock on the door. I wasn't in a hurry to answer the door. It was late at night, and it couldn't be anyone important. Unlocked the door, and it was my housemaster who sort of looked at me in a rather odd manner. And, uh, what's going on here? And uh, sort of said, you know, where's Christos? He was the thir third member of the study at the time, and pushed off. And then the next day after Compline, he, he, he announced that Compline, he said, I want to see Tarje and, and this other guy. I, 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 I want to see him in my study um, at, at 9.30 tonight. And we hadn't a clue what it was about, you see. I just didn't know what he wanted at all. And we went in there. He, w he wasn't really very clear either. He sat us down on the chair and said, now look, um, shut the door, will you? I, I want I want to know him. Look, um, I came in the other night, and well, um, you know, the door was locked, and uh, um, well, what were you? And, and finally, I mean, I didn't know what he was doing. He he, he sort of said to me, "What are you doing?" Or something. And he sort of let, let right down behind his desk like this, sort of playing something on the drawer, and said, "Look, um, are you?" And I said, sort of, you know, um, am I what, sir? And anyway, by the time Robert had clipped, you see, and he said he thinks we're queer. And no, 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 don't don't get us wrong. We're we're straight. It's all right. You know, it's just we're friends, good friends. And uh, ho, ho, ho. So um, he, he didn't look too convinced about this. And I was really shocked. I mean, you know, if you've got a, a good friend and, and suddenly someone suggests that there's something sort of mildly sexual about it, then you kind of shy off. And he'd come with me in my math prep and I'd say, no, don't come near me. You know? We went off and had a talk in the cloisters that night and we said, well, look, you know, we've got to tell him about the TV because that's why we have the door locked. And, and otherwise, he'll go on thinking we're bent for the rest of our life. I don't want a house master thinks I'm, I'm, I'm queer as duck soup. So we went back to his study and um, said, look, we, in fact, all the time we'd been concealing a TV. We, we, didn't, we didn't mean to do anything. That's why the door was locked. And he was so relieved. He sort of, oh, thank God. I'm so happy, you know, great. I, I always thought it all along. It was just, I was just testing, you know. And he said, it's all right, you can keep the TV. So we had, we're the only people ever to have a legalized television. We'd invite our buddies in to sort of watch the favorite programs. Um, so that's it. That's the only hangover of um, that sort of thing that I can tell you about, anyway. OK, gain your hold. Come on. Whatever the fees buy, it's certainly not luxury, especially for the smallest boys without their own studies. Get off the 
face, I'll die tonight. Think about the amount of money that your parents are spending sending you here. Gruesome, isn't it? No, not very much when one can try to avoid it. To lose a lot. But you know that they're spending a lot of money. Yep. Do you feel perhaps this pressure on you to do well because it's costing so much? Um, not really. I, uh, I don't feel many pressures to do well at the moment. It's just that I, I like to do well myself. But in those gruesome moments when you stop and think about the cost of it all, what do you find yourself thinking? <laughs> I find myself thinking, well, how come I'm mucking about so much? I mean, it's costing me two pence a minute. What am I doing? Do your parents ever tell you? No. Well, well I have to think about it because they're constantly reminding me. Yeah. Um, yes, I do. I mean, I feel, I feel in the way very, very bad about it. And I feel I have to work as hard as I possibly can, really, to sort of make it up to them. But then, I mean, this, this sounds horribly arrogant. Um, you know, I'm their child. I'm, in a way, their sort of investment, as it were. And that, you know, it's, you know they're going to be proud of me if I do well. So, really, it's a, it's a bit of a two-way thing. But, you know, I do, I do feel that I have to put in as much effort as I can in order to repay them for giving me this education. Really. It's the thing I'm, I was very aware of when I first came to teach at Westminster, was the way in which uh, the parents were watching their son's progress, watching my marking, watching what I was setting the children to read, and very often reading what their son was reading at the same time. I remember one boy complaining that he hadn't got his book in class because his mother had taken it away and was still reading it. Um, and w looking at the way in which the, the, the preps are being marked as well. I think it's very good for us to be aware of this constant parental supervision. These people are paying you know, enormous amounts of money, so not surprising they keep a pretty close eye on, on what, what kind of treatment their son's getting. He's a long, long way down, really. At the annual parents' parties, the paying customers get a first-hand chance to question what they're getting for an outlay of up to £3,000 a year. What well-off middle-class parents now seem to want isn't so much social cachet or the Victorian public school ideal of young Christian gentlemen, but A-levels, Oxbridge places and jobs. He's a, he's a talented boy, English, there's no doubt about that. Uh, he's not always um, extremely industrious, should I put it that way? I think he's quite correct. Undoubtedly, after that very bad first year, he's got a, a, a very sensitive imagination and a real feeling for words, which at the moment comes out more in his creative writing in his short stories and things like that than it does in his criticism of other people's writing. But I think if you've got this feel for words, in that case you can, you know, you can do, you can do literature without any difficulty at all. And he's been less responsive than most. And given the fact that he is intelligent, um, it's, it's irritated me. Mild. He's doing very well in the Russian. He's working extremely hard. Yes. yes. He's um, uh, very quiet in the classes, very passive. He doesn't contribute very much. I don't think he's very shy. He is quite reserved, yes. And I think it takes him probably some time until he really opens up. Mm -hmm. I think there's no need to worry unduly about slow reading, particularly if they're going onto the science side, where the volume of prose reading they're going to have to do is never going to be very high. Uh, the literature he's quite interested in. The Julius Caesar and the D.H. Lawrence. The Lawrence presents all sorts of psychological and social and emotional conundrums, uh, which I think are rather mystifying, but quite searching and demanding for kids this age to try to fathom and get in. You teach in the state sector, and yet yes. you send your own children to private schools. Why is that? Well, I very much enjoy teaching in a state school, and I like the challenges it presents. But I think it does produce a lot of pressure on the children, and some of them don't achieve as much as they might do. What kind of pressure? Um, pressure from sometimes from other children to not conform to what the teachers want. Don't you no. think there's pressure in Westminster? Oh yes, but it's an academic pressure which I feel is desirable. Not pressure from other children to underachieve. 
Does it worry you sometimes that your son is only meeting children from a very similar social background to his own and isn't really getting uh, an accurate picture of how society is ordered? Well, he went to a state primary school, so he mixed with children from many backgrounds there. Um, we live very close to Westminster School in Southwark, and so all the neighbouring children are also of mixed background, and so he has friends from all social classes. I don't think if you met him, you'd think he was a socially disadvantaged person for having been to Westminster or for having been to his uh, other school. And I, I don't think Westminster School is really so socially divisive. I don't think the boys are unrealistic about what their contemporaries outside are like. Does it ever worry you that your child is only meeting children from a very similar social background and not mixing with the sort of children you might mix with in a comprehensive school? Yes, it does. I've thought about it a lot. But in, in fact, his cousins go to a comprehensive school. So he has met, he has met their friends. But um, it's something which perhaps 30 years ago we wouldn't have given any thought to at all. We would have automatically sent him to private school. And we thought a long time before we decided, in fact, to send him to private school for this very reason that it is rather narrow. The sort of people you meet have to have money, for example, or they couldn't be here. And I want you to go home and wait until I call you. Don't try to be masterful. When we're married and I have problems to face, I hope you're less tedious and uninspired. Okay, I know the next bit. Thanks. Yeah, they do it in little circles, don't they, some ladies? I see them on the train. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, horrible. No, that's my lorgnette. Oh, yeah. It magnifies. Yeah, no, no, it's making me blind as well. <laughs> yeah, that's what's making me blind, Freeman. Yeah, not anything else. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> The point is, apparently, John's big mistake last night is he didn't make up. Ah, gosh, can I do that? You don't actually need to be made up at all. Except, Thank you, Daisy. Except for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. I'm only doing it for the makeup. Everybody said last night that you were too sort of blue and grey and else. Well, that was John. He's not doing it. Yes, now. okay. So just, just a little. Just just try and make him look younger. Don't be ridiculous. Oh, um, that one's got yeah. stay for the person I stay at the end. You're supposed to be the dead body, you don't yeah, need no, <laughs> Have I got a script for front with anybody? Have I? Have I got a script for front with? I must have a script for front. Sorry. I've really enjoyed producing Anthony Canova Lace. What? Can I come in through the cellar door? Otherwise, I'll be knocking you into Yes, I don't care where you come on, just come on. Look. I like the opportunity of being really bossy. I've got I'll be almost ready to come on. It's really exciting seeing something I produced Jason, going up on stage. Jason, do you know what happened to Petrus's putty? I think that when I grow up, I'd like to go on and actually produce things in the theatre. Wait, wait, don't, don't panic. I think they're all going to start in a minute. And I'll... I'm never so sure I want to be down in the cellar with him. Look at that puss. He looks like Boris Karloff. 